Well, in this quick lesson, we're going to show you how to create a Gmail account. And once you have a Gmail account, it gives you access to Google Docs and allows you to make your own website. Before we start, though, I'm going to take a look at this browser. This browser is actually the Chrome browser, which comes from Google and sets up very well with Google Apps. So to get it, if you're in Microsoft Explorer, just type download Chrome. And it takes about two minutes to set up. I'd highly recommend it. Anyway, if you want to get onto Gmail or get a Gmail account, um, you can search for Gmail. And it'll take you to the main Gmail page. If you don't have an account, you want to create an account, so you just click on Create Account. And then you choose a name. So let's say my name was Fred Flintstone. And then you have to choose a login. Because Gmail has been around for five and a half years, uh, a lot of the good logins are gone. So a lot of people will end up using their last name and uh, a number. So that one's not available. So Flintstone 591 is available. So the next thing you do is you have to choose a password. And then you have to choose a security question. And then recovery email um, is where if you lose your email address, they will send information so you can go back into it. And at the bottom here, you'll notice these strange characters come up. And that's to make sure that the computer's not being hacked using what they call a bot or robot, where it tries to log into the same site over and over again. And then you create the account. You then can log in. So you go to gmail.com. The first time, it'll already have you logged in. So there's your Gmail. Um, at the top here, you'll notice you'll have calendar. I'm just going to go to calendar quickly. And you choose your time zone. So we're in the eastern time zone. You can display the calendars in many ways. You can also share calendars. You can grab other calendars. For instance, if you're a Toronto Maple Leaf fan, you can grab the Leafs calendar and embed it directly. A good view of calendars is the month view. So let's say you're teaching and there is a test on the 21st of January. You can create that event. Or let's say running a sports team, maybe coaching hockey. And you create the event. You can embed these calendars directly into your web pages. Take a look at Google Docs. Google Docs is running under the cloud, and it gives you most of the main software. So if you go create new, you can create a Word document, PowerPoint, presentation, spreadsheet. The forms you can use to create online surveys even has drawing software. Another feature is you can upload any file. So you can actually use this as a memory stick. Basically, um, I wouldn't use memory sticks. I'd rather use this because memory sticks get damaged, or you could lose them, which also brings in some security issues. If you click on More, you'll notice that you have all these other tools as well, uh, including the ability to create blogs. We're going to take a look at Google Sites. Because as a teacher, I think this is your main vehicle. And to create a web page, um, fairly simple. Notice it will be under your Gmail address. So you just have to log in each time if you want to change your website. Create site. You then uh, give it a, a name. So let's say we'll call it Mr. Flintstone. You 
can then choose a theme. And if you click on more options, it'll give you security options, such as a site description. And what that what that has is information. So if somebody was Googling and they found your site, this is what would be put beside the name of the Mr. Flintstone site. You'll notice that uh, the default is that everybody in the world can see it. You could make it private, but as a teacher, I'd recommend it, you make it open. And then again, it asks you for a security code. And then you create the site. So Mr. Flintstone is not available, so we'll call it Mr. Flintstone 591. And we'll create the site. Okay, so creating a web page is not much more difficult than using a Word document. This is the main page, that's what has the word home on it. You can edit the page. You can type in text. You can change the size of the text and the color. Google has a nifty way of bringing in pictures. If you go to Google Images, um, click on Images, and we'll type in Fred Flintstone. OK, so there's some different images. So let's say we like this one. Uh, you click on the image. And you grab the URL. Now remember, there are copyright issues with doing this. I'll assume this one's OK. And then you go to Insert. And you'll notice all the things that you can insert at the top's image. And you can insert by URL. And you can resize that picture if you want. Another cool feature is the ability to insert the calendars. Very useful for teachers. So to go to insert, go to calendar, and I only have one calendar, and that's uh, the Fred Flintstone calendar. Select it, and I save it. And you'll notice it ends up as a Google gadget. So when you save the web page, um, you can see it there. And when you change your calendar, it automatically changes on this web page. Another thing you can do is you can add videos. So to do that, we're going to go to Create Page. And I'm going to call this page Video. And the one thing I really like is that on the sidebar, it automatically puts in the link. So you don't have to worry about linking. Um, I'm going to go back to YouTube. And I will search for Fred Flintstone. Click on a YouTube video I like. Copy the URL, insert, and right at the bottom you have video from YouTube. You then paste in the URL, same as you did with the picture, hit save, and then you save it. So now we have the video. The videos are quite useful. If, if you search the web um, for things, for example, if you're a phys ed teacher and you search for tutorials on volleyball, you could find those. 
if you're a science teacher, you could see experiments or geography information, world issues. Uh, videos are a very powerful tool. The other thing you can do is if we go back to uh, Google Documents, is if you're looking at documents, you can upload any Word PowerPoint document and it'll automatically get into your Google Docs. We're going to create a new Word document, so create new. So let's say you had an assignment that you wanted to give the students. And you had text written down here. We're not going to rename this uh, assignment 5. OK, so now the assignment is saved. You'll notice that this Save button um, is not highlighted anymore, which means it automatically saves. I'm going to close the document. I'm going to go back to my web page. And I'm going to create a brand new page called Assignments. Create the page. You'll notice that on the sidebar, we now have Assignments. I'm going to edit the page. And if I go to insert, you also have the option of inserting uh, documents. Click on document. And there's assignment number five. And select it. You can change the size of it. I'm going to make it a little bit smaller. Save it. Again, it's Google Gadget. And you can see that assignment five is embedded automatically. The other advantage of the web pages is you can search the web page. So if you had hundreds of assignments, you could basically search through all the assignments through the web page. And another very useful type of page for teachers to create is something they call a filing cabinet. The filing cabinet web page uh, allows you to upload documents. So if you've already created documents in Microsoft Word or Excel, you can upload those documents very quickly into your web page and sort it. So this is a quick little lesson on how to create your Gmail account, how to create a calendar, a little bit how to use Docs, and probably the most useful thing for teachers is the ability to create your own virtual web presence.